Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The date is the 11th of February 2017. The time is 12.12 GMT. I'm sat minding my own business when a notification pops up on my phone. Our legal system is broken, it begins. 77% of refugees allowed into the US since travel reprieve hail from seven suspect countries, it continues. So dangerous, it ends. Later that day, on the 11th of February 2017, the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, with the Twitter handle at RealDonaldTrump, would tweet a further six 140 character messages, I believe to be pieces of art in themselves. Now, according to the Longman Dictionary Online, an art form is a way of expressing ideas, for example, in a piece of writing. A more, uh, an alternative, more comprehensive definition can be found in the English Oxford Living Dictionary, which defines an art form as any activity regarded as a medium of imaginative or creative self-expression. Now, I believe that this definition is the most accurate in helping us to define Donald Trump's tweets as art. They are self-expressive, as we saw with the first example, he has put across his views on how he believes the American legal system is broken. And they are creative because they're not in written format, or they're not spoken, they're taken using social media. Now furthermore, Donald Trump's tweets follow a similar artistic pattern. Taking our first one for example, Trump begins by outlining the topic or character he wishes to criticise, in this case, the legal system. Secondly, he'll explain why this person or uh, topic is wrong, in this case because the legal system has allowed a large proportion of refugees into the country who come from suspect terrorist countries. Finally, he'll finish with a strong buzzword, with an added so and an exclamation mark at the end to further highlight his disgust and hatred he has towards the topic. Now, according to Trump Twitter archive, Donald Trump has used the word dangerous a mere 44 times. I say mere because compared to pathetic, 72, <laughs> weak, 159, and loser, 234, <laughs> the word dangerous to Donald Trump is simply the title of a Michael Jackson album. <laughs> Donald Trump aims to be as less philosophical and as less technical um, in his tweets. He wants the audience to be able to read it and understand the message in just one go. Now, linking in with tonight's topic, I believe that his tweets are more complex and indeed more philosophical than he probably thinks. I believe that they are neo-Aristotelian or a new perspective on the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle's three modes of persuasion outlined in his work Rhetoric. So to begin with, in Book 1, Chapter 2, Aristotle states that a rhetoric speaker can persuade an audience on any subject matter. Unlike a medicine expert, for example, who can only convince people on what is healthy and unhealthy. Now, this idea of Trump being able to persuade an audience on any subject matter is certainly true. These four tweets show us. For example, Trump tweets on his daughter, the phenomenon of fake news, the relationship between America and Mexico, and himself. Now we've learned how Donald Trump tweets on any matter, we can see how he actually persuades people. In line 1356a of rhetoric, Aristotle says that the first kind of persuasion, so the first way that a speaker can persuade an audience into thinking a certain way, is using the personal character. So the speaker, in Trump's case, will appeal to the credibility, whether it be positive or negative, of the topic. So in the first case, he appealed to the negative uh, quality of the legal system by saying it's broken. Now secondly, the speaker will put the audience into a certain frame of mind, or pathos. Now, the Greek English translation says that pathos is an appeal to emotion. So the speaker will use, name, and describe a particular emotion to make people feel joyous, angry, sad, or happy. Trump used the word dangerous. And finally, is logos. Uh, Aristotle believed that this appeals to the rational capacity that all human beings possess. So the speaker will use proof, or apparent proof, provided by the words of the speech itself. Like I did when I started this talk off by saying, good evening. The time was past 6 p.m. and it was before bedtime and can therefore be classed as a rational fact. Now let's apply our fourth century theory to a modern 21st day example. It's Friday. 
How many bald eagles did wind turbines kill today? They are an environmental and aesthetic disaster. <laughs> so Trump begins by using the logic. He is appealing to the directly self-evident, because if we look at the metadata of the tweets, we can see it was tweeted on Friday the 24th of August, 2012. Secondly, Trump appeals to the ethos, the character. He describes the bald eagle, which is a symbol of how America is a free and independent country. Thirdly, combined uh, with the emotion, he states how he makes people think of a symbol of a dead bald eagle, which is seen in America as weak and powerless, something Americans don't want to think. Finally, he states that how wind turbines are a blight on the environmental and picturesque landscape of America. It is therefore, through the logos, the ethos and the pathos, that Trump has subconsciously persuaded Americans to take direct action on removing wind turbines because they are affecting the character of America, making it seem weak and powerless, and as he says, they're a disaster. Now, if we add certain words to our text, um, it's been cut off, but it says the self-expressive, so as Trump is tweeting his own personal views, and persuasive through Aristotle's three modes of persuasion, pieces of art which are Donald Trump's tweets. Now, he tweets on a universal subject matter, unlike the particular subject matter of that of a medical expert. Now, the final point I'd like to make is about how Trump is changing the nature of presidential communication. In one of my lectures a couple of weeks ago, the lecturer said this. He said that in the era of Donald Trump, American hegemony seems to be empire by petulant tweeting. Now, I think this phrase is the best description of how Trump is changing presidential communication. During Obama's presidency, this phrase, empire by petulant tweeting, was non-existent. Obama was given a state-approved uh, BlackBerry, which was never publicly disclosed whether he could call, text, or tweet, but if we have a look at the data, then we can confidently say that he couldn't. In Barack Obama's Twitter bio, it said that all President of the United States tweets were signed with a hyphen and his initials, B.O. His other tweets would be celebratory messages to his fellow vice uh, presidents and his fellow states people. So if we take the logic of tweets not being signed by the president as being uh, tweets not by them and those being signed by uh, tweets by them, we can see that Donald Trump never signs his tweets, so he never tweets. But that is an incorrect conclusion. We can actually come up with three equations, three formulae, to help us understand when a tweet is by Trump. This first one. So if a tweet, a Donald Trump tweet, contains quotation marks and or a picture and a link, then it is a tweet from an iPhone, meaning it is tweeted by his PR man, Brad Pascal, meaning it's not by Trump. Second of all, if the tweet was posted before 10 a.m. EST, it's a tweet from an Android, meaning Trump tweeted it himself from his personal Android phone and a personal setting without outside interference. Thirdly, if the tweet does not include an exclamation mark or has a positive exclamation mark, it's a tweet from the iPhone, meaning Trump didn't do it himself. This tweet, for example, we know isn't by Trump because it contains a picture it was tweeted after 10 a.m. EST, and it does, not include a it does not include an exclamation mark nor a positive exclamation mark. This one, designed on negotiations yet, when I do just like with the F-35 fighter jet or the Air Force One program, price will come way down. We know that this tweet is by Trump because it doesn't contain a picture or a link. It was posted before 10 a.m. EST, and it includes a negative exclamation mark. And this is the big point that Donald Trump is changing the nature of presidential communication and making it more personal and more digital in nature. See, during his presidency, Barack Obama performed 1,852 speeches. During that same time period, so from 2009 to 2017, Donald Trump tweeted 14,364 times, showing us that Donald Trump is making it empire by petulant tweeting rather than empire by public speaking. Furthermore, according to readability score, Donald Trump's tweets and speeches operate at a fourth grade language level, or year five if you're an English student. He uses words like goofy and clown, something a year five student would be able to understand. 
compared to Barack Obama, who would use a vocab level of a 10th grade student and the grammar level of an 8th grade student, which is showing us, therefore, that it's the less complex, the readily understandable, so even a year 5 student can understand what Trump is saying, and he's making it digital rather than public speaking, the nature of presidential communication. Now, our final point is looking at how Donald Trump is changing the tone of presidential communication. Now, as I previously said, Barack Obama would tweet more good things about how the economy is prospering and he would ce celebrate happy birthday to uh, his fellow Americans. Now, this diagram here, in the red we can see the tweets by Trump and in the blue we can see ones from the iPhone and, of course, the ones from Barack Obama. So, with the red we can see that Trump has an underlying negative tone uh, having tones of sadness, fear, anger, and disgust, using words like angry, crazy, disaster, bad, unfair, tough, whereas the tweets from the iPhone are more positive in tone, using words like wonderful, winning, honor, and safe, and love. So overall, Donald Trump is changing the tone. He's making it more negative compared to Obama and his predecessors of how they would be more positive when communicating. So overall, we can see how Donald Trump's tweets are persuasive through Aristotle's three modes of persuasion, logos, ethos, and pathos. We can see how they are pieces of art because they are self-expressive. He expresses his own personal views in a creative, more digital manner, as I said, empire by petulant tweeting rather than empire by public speaking. And he tweets on universal subject matter unlike experts who tweet on particular subject matter. And finally, he's changing the nature of presidential communication, changing it to platform online. He is using fourth grade language level to compare to Obama's almost double, eighth grade and tenth grade, and he is making it more negative in tone. So overall, Donald Trump is changing the nature of presidential communication with an average of eight tweets every single day. Thank you.